So you got yourself a Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 and now is a good time to set aside a little time to set up your new Galaxy wearable and customize it the right way specifically for you. So here are 20 of the first things you should do and tips and tricks that you need to know about to make your Galaxy Watch slash fitness tracker work like clockwork from day one. So your Galaxy Watch is gonna hold a lot of data about you, your health, also all your messaging and your email and even your bank details. So someone could find this watch and actually access all of that and even spend your money. So I recommend you put in a safety precaution here and that is a pin number or a swipe gesture to unlock the watch. In order to do this, swipe down from the top, go to settings, scroll down to where you see security and privacy. And then here, set a lock type. Now, if you're worried about having to do this every single time you wake the watch, don't worry about that. The only time you'll need to input your pin number or pattern is when you take the watch off and put it back on again. So trust me, this is one you wanna set up immediately on day one. So when you first get your Galaxy Watch, the connection between your phone and your watch is Bluetooth, and you can install watch faces and apps on your phone that will then go to the watch over Bluetooth. The problem with Bluetooth is, is it's pretty slow and there is a much better way to download stuff more quickly to the watch, and that is to enable Wi-Fi and connect it to your home Wi-Fi network. It's very easy to do. Swipe down from the top, go to settings. Here, go to connections, and here, go to Wi-Fi. Now, I recommend you only set this up for your home Wi-Fi network and maybe other trusted networks that you use a lot. Once you've done this, when you install apps or download music or anything to the watch, it's not going via Bluetooth from your phone, it's going direct to the watch, and that is so much quicker. Trust me, this is gonna save you time, and as you know, nobody can give you a time back. So thank me later. So usually the first thing that most people will do is customize the wallpaper on the watch. Now what I recommend you do is actually have three or four different wallpapers for three or four different use cases, and you can do it directly here on the watch, but it's much easier to do in the Galaxy Wearable app. So if you open the Galaxy Wearable app, go to Watch Faces, you'll see there is a selection that Samsung have laid out for you already, ready to go. At the top, you'll see the Watch Faces that already exist on the watch. And you can manage these at any time by hitting the Manage button here, and you can delete ones if you don't want them. Now, if you want to switch between any of your already installed Watch Faces, just hold your finger down anywhere on the watch face and you can scroll between them here. And remember you can use the crown now to swipe around on the watch. There are different categories of watch faces. What I recommend you do is have one for everyday use, one for business dress, so when you're wearing a suit or whatever, and then another one for sports tracking. My favorites are in the graphical section, if you go all the way across, you've got the fresh watch face and I've got that here. You can see I've customized the colors to be blue. For business dress, I like the classic watch face that's called stretched time. Again, you can customize the color on that as well. And for the health tracking, the best watch face in my opinion is this one, the Samsung Health Dashboard Plus. And again, you can customize the colors on each one of these watch faces. And to do that, all you need to do is just select the watch face you want, hit customize here, and then you've got a bunch of different options that you can switch between. And before we move on, just something else you should know about is some of the watch faces have complications that can be customized specifically to what you want to keep track of. For example, if I go across to the classic watch face, the stretched one, choose that one, go to customize here within the app, and you can see we can change the style different colors, the different color presets, and then we've got complication one right now is set to nothing. So let's say I want access to my buds quickly from this watch face. I can add that complication here to the left side of the clock. Complication two, we can add something else, for example, battery life. You can have a lot more information on display. So find a good watch face for yourself and customize it specifically with the information that you wanna keep track of. And check it out, you can even have quick access to your camera and actually use the Galaxy Watch as a camera viewfinder. So if your Galaxy Watch is box fresh, there's a very good chance that a lot of the Samsung apps already pre-installed on the watch will need updating. And there's a quick way to check this. Here's how you do it. Swipe down from the top, go to settings. Scroll down to where you see apps. 
scroll down again and go to Samsung app updates. Now I've already done this, but there were a good few apps that weren't up to date on my watch and I didn't even realize I'd been using it for a day or two and they still hadn't updated. So make sure you check this. There'll likely be a couple of apps that aren't up to date. Just hit update all and it will do it automatically. Again, this is better to do it when you're on Wi-Fi. Don't do it over Bluetooth, it will take too long. So by default, there will be pre-installed apps on your watch. If you swipe up anywhere on the watch face, you'll see all of the apps and you'll see they're all kind of randomly laid out. Now, what you probably want to do straight away is organize those apps into an easier to navigate setup. And you can do it on the watch, but it's a bit more fiddly than doing it on the phone. So I do recommend you do it on the phone. Open the Galaxy Wear app, go to the app screen here, here you can drag around any of the apps that you're gonna use the most. For example, the Samsung Health app, maybe we want to have this at the top, we just drag it around. And you can actually create groups here as well, so we can drag apps onto other apps and create folders if we want to and name those folders. Entirely up to you if you want to do that or not. It can be good if you've got tons of apps on the watch. So a lot of you guys might be happy with the pre-installed apps and not want to add anything new, but for those of you that do want to add new apps, for example, Strava, Nike Run, or anything like that, here's how you do it. The best way, in my opinion, is actually to do it on the watch itself, but a good way to browse to see what's out there is to use the phone. So on the phone, if you go to store here, you can see all of the apps that are available for the watch. So whatever you're looking for, just type it in here. You can find it very quickly and you can see that it is available for the watch. You will need to install it for your phone as well. For example, Strava. Now to install apps on the watch, if you go to the Play Store, which is right here, we can search at the top, but there are categories as well that we can quickly navigate through. So we've got watch faces, tools, productivity, health and fitness. We can go to that quickly. And this saves us having to type everything out manually. And you can see Strava's there as well. We can just tap that and install that. And again, because this is connected to the Wi-Fi, it's gonna download much quicker. And if you don't believe me, try this over Bluetooth and see how long it takes. It takes ages. And sometimes within the Google Play Store, when you're installing an app, you'll see a little drop down menu next to the install button, which says install to watch. So you can do that sometimes. For some reason on this version of Android and this version of the watch software, I'm not seeing that that often, but I do remember seeing that on the previous version of the Galaxy Watch. So keep an eye out for that. And if you want to customize the layout here on the watch without using the phone, you can do it. Just hold your finger down on any of the apps and you can drag them around however you want that way too. It's much easier on the phone though. Okay, so at some point, you're gonna need to use the keyboard on the watch. And the watch face is quite small. And if you have really chunky fingers, you might struggle to do it. So let me show you a few tips and tricks to make typing and inputting words easier. So I'm just gonna open the Google Play Store here. And at the top where it says search, you can see it's a search for app. Now when I tap on the text field, you'll see the keyboard pops up and uh, I can type in anything I want, but it is very, very small. And it will give you auto correct options as well across the top. Now, if your fingers are particularly chunky, what you definitely want to do is swipe up on this keyboard and change it to swipe inputs. So swipe inputs looks like that, the finger with the squiggly line. Once you select that, you can now just swipe on the screen to spell things out. And it is case sensitive, so this can be a bit fiddly. So there's actually an even easier way than this to type on the phone. And that's if you hold the button here down. Now we can transcribe whatever it is we want to say instead of having to type it out manually. Trust me, this is so much easier. Okay, so from time to time, you're gonna get messages on your watch, maybe from your text messaging app, whether that's WhatsApp or the default one or whatever. And maybe you don't wanna use the dictation because you don't wanna broadcast your message to everyone around you. Well, you can set up quick responses on the watch. So you don't have to type everything out every time. Here's how you do it. Go to the Galaxy wearable app, go to watch settings, scroll down to general and scroll down to where it says quick responses. 
Now here, there's a bunch of already pre-programmed ones and we can edit and delete these if we don't want them or move them around. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can add your own quick responses. And as you can see, here's one I added earlier. So there are now four user inputs on the Galaxy Watch 6. We have the rotating dial, which I absolutely love. We have the touch screen, and then we've got the two buttons on the side. So what you should do straight away is remap these buttons and tailor them to do exactly what you want them to. And this is incredibly easy to do. Go back into the Galaxy wearable app, go to your watch settings, scroll down to where it says advanced features. And here you'll see what the home button and the back button are currently mapped to do. So I've remapped the double push of the home button to open the Google Wallet. Because I use Google Wallet all the time, you can set this to do anything you want, open any app you want within this list. So if I double push this home button now, you'll see it opens Google Pay. And because the watch is not on my wrist and I haven't put in the pin number, it cannot be used. So this is just a good demonstration of why I recommended the pin number as tip number one. The long push and hold on the home button opens Bixby. And the great thing about Bixby and this particular watch is it knows all of the commands, all of the functionality for this watch. However, when it comes to longer tailed questions, you might prefer to use the Google Assistant. So you can remap the push and hold to Google Assistant if you download it first through the Play Store. The other option is to set it as the power off menu. Now the back button, which is this lower button, a short press goes to your previous screen. So whatever you were on last, if you push that button, it will go back to it. I prefer to have the back button as a multitasking button. So you can change this by tapping here and going to show recent apps. So now I can push the back button and go to any of the apps that I've previously opened just by scrolling around like this. And it will even show you what apps are actually running in the background. So if your watch is ever feeling like it's slow, you can actually close those apps down if you want to right here. So I do recommend you start using your watch for paying for things because sometimes, trust me, it's just easier than getting your wallet out of your pocket or even your phone out of your pocket. I find myself paying for things with my watch way more often these days. And it is kind of a game changer. So let me show you how to activate this on this watch. Swipe down from the top, go to your settings, scroll to connections, scroll down, and you'll see NFC for contactless payments. By default, this will actually be switched off on your watch unless you've already set up your Samsung Pay or Google Wallet. So go here, switch it on, and you can also pay with open app as well. So if you have two different wallets on here, for example, whichever one's open, you can use that one at that particular time. Okay, so this is really important to set up on day one, and it's the tiles on the watch. So when you swipe from right to left, you'll see I have a bunch of different tiles. We can also use the dial here to go through these tiles. Now, I've just messed around with this and put a bunch of random ones on here just for the sake of this video. But I'm gonna show you how to customize these tiles, how to delete them, and how to add new ones. The best way to do it, once again, is within the Galaxy wearable app. You'll see the tile section here. And you'll see at the top all of the tiles that I've already added to the watch. Again, we can go to manage here and we can delete them this way. You can also delete them by hitting the minus here as well. Now, all of the tiles that are available will be listed below. So you have clock tiles, media controls, contacts, favorites, and there are lots more to choose from. What I recommend you do from day one is, is to delete all of the tiles that already exist there and try to list out the tiles that are the most important to you. For example, if you're gonna be doing mainly health and fitness stuff with the watch, maybe the most important tile for you is gonna be the workouts. Second most might be your daily activity, so you can see your progress on a daily basis. Let's say you wanna keep an eye on your blood pressure and do ECGs from time to time, you might want to add those next. And you'll notice that Strava has its own tile as well. So as and when you download other apps, you will start to notice more tiles becoming available within this menu. So definitely spend a bit of time setting up the specific tiles for your specific use case of your Galaxy Watch, whether it's fitness or leisure, the setups will be completely different in those two different use cases. But just make sure the order makes sense to you. 
Okay, so this might seem pretty obvious, but some people might miss this. So let me just show you how to manually do it. And it is to install the Samsung Health app. Yes, you can use third parties, but I do recommend, even if you're not gonna use the Samsung Health app that much, definitely download it and install it because there's some features here that can only be done through it. So go to the Galaxy Store, search for Samsung Health and install the Samsung Health app. So a couple of things I recommend you do on day one with the Samsung Health app is within the exercise panel here, you'll see there's some default exercises set out. What you wanna do is map your top three exercises so that you have quick access to them all the time. And it's very easy to do. Just go to the more section and you'll see right now the ones with the stars next to them are my top three. We can undo the stars and add whatever we want to add. And if what you're looking for isn't in this list, if you hit the plus button here, you'll see the option to select from exercise list and they are categorized across the top. And if the exercise that you're looking for is not in this list, you can hit the plus at the top here and you can actually create your own exercise, give it a name. And although this one won't be specifically tailored for that exercise, it will count your calories burned, your distance traveled using GPS and all that kind of stuff. And once you've chosen your top three workouts on your watch, you'll see that your exercises are reflected on the workout tile on the watch and you do have access to the other workouts as well here in the more section. So another good reason to have the Samsung Health app is the body composition measurement feature. So if you scroll down, you'll see body composition. Here you can enter your weight and hit save and the watch can actually measure your body composition and it will tell you your percentage of body fat, skeletal muscle and more. And it does this using the electrocardiogram sensors that it has built in. And the watch will talk you through step by step how to do this accurately. So there are some advanced health tracking features here within the Galaxy Watch 6. And it is the blood pressure and the ECG, the electrocardiogram. And you'll notice the tiles right now say learn more. And the reason it says learn more is because you actually need another app in order to get these to work correctly. So when you tap learn more on the watch, it will prompt you to download and install the Samsung Health Monitor app. And for you to properly calibrate the watch for blood pressure, you do actually need an actual blood pressure monitor, a professional one, something like this. And these are actually quite cheap. They're around 20 pounds on Amazon here in the UK, probably $20 in the States. And if you don't have one of these, maybe you can borrow one from someone or next time you're at the GP's office, do it real quick there. So you go to Calibrate Watch, it tells you what you need. Definitely read the disclaimer and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to calibrate it. So I've just gone through the steps and set up the blood pressure measurement feature here on the watch. It involves you taking three measurements with the heart rate monitor whilst wearing the watch and then synchronizing the numbers up. So now the watch can measure blood pressure independently. And here's the second reason why you need the Samsung Health Monitor app. It is to activate the ECG feature. Again, follow the steps on the app and it will show you how the ECG works. And it even gives you a bit of a guide as to what the information it provides means. Definitely read the disclaimers and you only have to run through these steps once. And the Samsung Health Monitor does keep all of the data available in these nice little diagrams so you can actually look at it in depth if you want to. And yes, I am feeling a little stressed out right now. Making these videos is stressful. So a little thumbs up and a subscribe might help me relax a little. Anyway, let's carry on. So here's a quick tip that could be very useful for you to keep track of what's going on and to remember key moments in time. If you hit both of the buttons at the same time, the home button and the side key, you'll notice it takes a screenshot. So if you've hit some kind of landmark or you've beaten your personal best or something like that, and you wanna keep that as an image on the watch and also on your device, you can screenshot at any time by hitting both buttons together. Now, one of the great things about this watch is you can store media on it locally. So if you have MP3 files on your phone or on your computer, and you want to transfer them here, you can do it. So in order to do that, go to your Galaxy Wear app, go to watch settings, go to manage content, and you'll see here tracks on watch. Here you can add 
music from your phone directly on to the watch. Now, another way to do that is of course through your music streaming app. So for example, for me, I use Deezer quite a lot. And this is the same for Spotify and YouTube music and everything like that. You can actually download your playlist here and you'll see there's the downloads there. And I haven't got anything downloaded at the moment, but I could choose any of these playlists that I've got set up here. Some of them are really old. <laughs> Uh, and download these locally to the watch. But the real tip that I wanna show you here is the media controls. So you can have a tile as permanent media controls, or you can activate a mode that just brings the media controls up whenever you're listening to music or watching a video, which is what I recommend you do. So to do this, swipe down from the top, go to your settings once again, scroll down to the display section, tap on that, scroll down, and you'll see show media controls. And it says just beneath it, show controls on the watch when you start playing audio or video on your phone. So this means if your phone is connected to your Galaxy Buds, you can control it here on the watch. Your Buds can connect directly to the watch as well. Or if you've got your phone connected to a monitor or a TV for a Samsung DeX, you can control the media from your watch. So here's a safety feature that could be a lifesaver for you. And I do recommend you set it up just in case. So if you go to your settings on your watch, go to safety and emergency, scroll down to where it says hard fall detection. So the watch can detect hard falls. And if you set up all your emergency information with this enabled, you can actually get it to contact the emergency services or family or friend to let them know what's going on. But don't worry about this one too much because if you do activate it by accident, let's say you go on a roller coaster or something like that, you do get a bit of a countdown for you to shut it down and you can customize that countdown to whatever you want. By default, it's on 10 seconds. Okay, so this next tip, I recommend you proceed with caution, but they are good to use, particularly if the type of sports you're doing involves your hands getting wet or wearing gloves. Check this out. Go to the Galaxy wearable app, Scroll down to advanced features. And it's this section here, the gestures, they're all switched off out of the box. And what you can do with these gestures is actually answer calls by making this hand gesture. <laughs> and like I said before, proceed with caution. You don't wanna end up getting yourself punched in the face at the gym. There's also a dismiss alerts and calls gesture. And once again, be careful where you use this. You don't wanna get your ass kicked whilst dismissing alerts and calls. And the last one is quick launch. So with the quick launch, you can actually select specific apps that you want it to activate when you do this hand gesture. <laughs> once again, proceed with caution. Now here's a kind of hidden feature within the advanced section on the Galaxy wearable app. Go to advanced features, scroll down, and you'll see remote connection. So this will allow you to sync the data between your phone and your watch over Wi-Fi, even when you're out of Bluetooth range. So this means when you're at home, if you leave your phone somewhere and you go far away, back of the garden or something like that, your watch can still sync the data using the Wi-Fi signal. It's just gonna make things easier for you when you're on a Wi-Fi network that your watch is also connected to. And if you activate this mode here, you can make calls and send text messages, again, when you're not connected via Bluetooth, but over the Wi-Fi network. Okay, so this one is a very powerful feature and it is Bixby. So if you hold the Bixby button down, you see the little compass here. If you tap that, you'll actually see all of the commands that Bixby recognizes for this watch. And a lot of these are gonna be very useful for you if you're at the gym or if you're running or things like that. And if you wanna see all of the things that Bixby can do, hit explore on phone. And it will open up this page here, which will show you all of the commands that Bixby knows. So I do recommend you spend a bit of time familiarizing yourself with Bixby because it really does work well here on this Galaxy Watch. Here's a bonus tip for you guys for making it all the way to the end. If you wanna make your watch a little bit more realistic, check this one out. Swipe down from the top, go to your settings. Go to sounds and vibration. Go to system sounds. And here you can activate ticking.
So your Galaxy watch will actually sound like a mechanical watch. And here's the final bonus tip for you guys. If you go to the Wear app once again, scroll down to manage content. And here you can auto sync photo albums on your phone with your watch so that you can have different images on your device every time you wake it up. So I appreciate you guys for watching this one. If you got any value out of this, a little thumbs up would make my day. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And if you wanna check out more tips and tricks for this watch, check out my Galaxy Watch 5 tutorial. A lot of people found that one very useful. That's on screen right now. And if you've got the Galaxy Buds or the new flip phone, I've done some tutorials for those as well. They're on screen. Appreciate you guys watching this one. See you in the next one. Don't be late.